Hello everyone, and uh, I was trying to find a place to shelter in place, not from Omicron, but from this weather, but uh, I think I found a relatively low wind spot. Let's see how we go. But I think uh, shelter in place is becoming the theme of the moment as Omni Omicron, Omicron uh, finds a foothold in New South Wales, Sydney, most certainly. We've had a case in uh, Chatswood, for over, stayed in Chatswood for over a week while contagious. Uh, and we've also now had a community transmission, most likely in Western Sydney with a school student out there. Uh, so I would say Omicron is well and truly here and has a foothold that won't be stopped. So then the upside from all of that is hopefully it's something we can live with, uh, with the little caveats within that being that perhaps vaccines will have some impact on it uh, and that it will remain a mild illness. Now remember, we need to see another couple of weeks before we know if this variant is capable of fatalities or not. Just because there haven't been any clear fatalities yet doesn't mean there will not be. Uh, fatalities are not an instant uh, consequence usually of getting COVID, so give it some time there. Hopefully, touch wood, uh, it will be the case that it is a more, more mild form of the COVID situation, but we can't be sure of that yet. And anyone who's saying it is, is really, I think, uh, just a little bit ahead of themselves. Could prove to be the case, but there's certainly not enough uh, period of time yet to be sure of that. In terms of vaccine resistance, uh, it's highly, it's almost a given that Omicron is going to be vaccine resistant to a degree. Um, the fact that uh, people who've previously had COVID are easily reinfected with this variant in other words, the variant overcomes their own immune system response and antigens then uh, build up, then it's likely that it's also going to be vaccine resistant. And uh, the head of Moderna has already said that that's most likely the case. Almost certainly the case, I think, were the words used. So we're not out of, uh, you know, I just, I, people shouldn't be thinking that everything's okay and this is all going to be fine people should be thinking there is the potential for governments to overreact. There is the potential, therefore, for further significant supply chain disruption. Most certainly it is already the case, it is a given, that global travel will be reduced, it's already reduced, will be further reduced by this variant for the time being. Now, vaccines are great, but as the head of Oxford said Oxford University said the person in charge of develop, partially developing Astra herd immunity by vaccination is a myth that was the scientific view from Oxford University many months ago uh, so vaccinations help and they give us some protection while we find natural herd immunity which hopefully we will and uh, I mean it might be a little bit wishful thinking but it is also scientifically possible and therefore well worth consideration uh, that if Omicron replaces Delta uh, which looks like it could well do uh, wouldn't it be nice if it is a milder version. Now all of that said there is ongoing risk from the variant from the Omicron variant to the global economy it's probably not as great as markets feared, but to me, the bigger factor for the outlook for the US equity market, the Australian equity market, is that our economies were already slowing or having a little burst coming out of, you know, everyone gets excited about the data coming out of uh, lockdowns. Well, of course it's strong. You know, people just have to walk, one person has to walk into the corner cafe, sit down and order a meal, and boom, hospitality is through the roof compared to the previous month. So. That uptick in data we're seeing at the moment in Australia is not a sign that the economy is actually that strong. You can be sure the economy is less strong than the data we're going to see over the next month or two. The economy, just remember that, the underlying fundamental Australian economy is less strong than what we're going to see over the next month or two in terms of data. So whenever good data, exciting data comes out, just keep that in mind and realize the outlook could be a little bit different to that. Um, the market, the stock market, volatile but bearish is the most apt description of US equities and Australian equities at the moment. Diabolical collapse is the risk for the Australian dollar. Gold, just keep, I've said the whole way through, it's going to be very volatile but steady acquisition in small amounts will pay dividends and I continue to believe that. 
So I'm bullish gold. In fact, if markets crash again tonight in the US, remember they're yo-yo markets, they go up one day, close on their highs, go down the same amount the next day or worse, close on their lows. Remember, overall, this is a downtrend. The lows are getting lower and the highs are getting lower. This is a downtrend, despite how big any single intraday rally may be. So, volatile downtrend, think of that. If, I, if, if that changes, I will let you know. But for the moment, that is the dominant outlook for markets. Um, currencies, as I said, Australian dollar, diabolical. Euro's trying very hard to create a base here. So we might see US dollar consolidation as the Australian dollar collapses. I think there's a lot of risk for the Australian dollar, given that the global investment community will view Australia as highly vulnerable to any further reductions in travel and trade and supply chain disruption. We all know that to be the case. This is another wave of that. But what people haven't appreciated fully uh, previously is just how weak the domestic economy is. So still a very bearish outlook. I wish you well for the weekend with, and uh, wishing you some very clever investment decisions. Clifford Bennett, Chief Economist, ACY Securities. Thank you.